I'm here at the biggest electric vehicle event in America, but it's not what you think. It's the work truck show. You gotta see inside. This will be the first of four videos from the show. In this one, I'll cover class one and two electric pickups. Those are in the light duty category. Light duty cargo vans will be in the next video. After that, I'll cover medium duty electric trucks. And finally, I'll highlight some of the heavy duty electric trucks. In the intro, I said that this is the biggest electric vehicle show. And you're probably thinking that was a bad dad joke. Ha ha, big trucks. But seriously, commercial trucks are moving full speed ahead to electrification. Not all manufacturers of passenger cars and trucks have fully embraced EVs. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about you, Toyota. But the commercial truck manufacturers are all in. And I'm going to state my bias here. I really believe that the people at this show generally don't like EVs. They don't want one in their driveway. They're skeptical. They may flat out hate this transition. But it's not up to them. They're listening to the fleet managers who buy these things. And the fleet managers love to save money. They are masters of efficiency. Electric trucks don't use gas or diesel. Electricity is cheaper. I saw manufacturers claiming up to a 40% reduction in maintenance costs because EVs have regenerative braking, which don't require service as often, and there's no need for oil changes. Fleet managers talk about TCO, total cost of ownership, and in their calculations, they show significant savings, even after you factor in the cost of charging equipment, which is amortized over time, and the higher initial price of the electric truck, they save money. All of this was before the Inflation Reduction Act passed in 2022, which adds on top of that federal incentives for transitioning their fleet. Add to that the fact that many of these large corporations have made pledges to go net zero carbon emissions by a certain date, and it's a no-brainer that trucks are going electric. The truck show is officially called Work Truck Week. It's run by the NTEA and happens every March in Indianapolis. Work truck manufacturers come here, van body and other equipment manufacturers come here, and fleet buyers come here. I'm going to give an overview of all the battery electric work trucks of note at the show, I won't be talking about the use of biofuels or synthetic e-fuels, nor will I talk about hydrogen. There were some presentations on these subjects, but nowhere near as much activity as with battery electrics. It's the supply of hydrogens that, that's the problem. The trucks work. They offer some advantages, but it's not easy to make clean hydrogen. They need to do so economically and solve that problem first. If you're not totally familiar with the classes of trucks, don't worry, I wasn't either. It's all based on their GVWR, that's an acronym, we love acronyms. Here's a chart to explain. You probably drive a class one car or truck. Bigger pickups and some electric pickups are heavy enough to be classified as a class two. I'm gonna cover class three trucks in the medium duty video. There is a little bit of overlap between medium and light duty when it comes to pickup. At the show, any class three truck I saw offered was offered in heavier versions, so I put them in the medium duty category. Ford F-150 Lightning, the award-winning Lightning, and for good reasons. Owners are praising this pickup for personal use and it's available for fleets to buy now as a work truck. The Ford F-150 Lightning Pro obviously has the same body as the combustion engine F-150, so any cargo systems or accessories should fit the Lightning Pro. It also offers the front trunk for additional storage, and yes, it started. Ford is claiming to have the largest and most accessible front trunk of any electric pickup. The frunk wars have begun. I'm going to declare Ford the benchmark for electric work pickups. As I review the other trucks, I'll compare them back to the Lightning Pro. The Lightning Pro has a standard range 98 kilowatt hour battery that gives it up to 240 miles of range to get the extended range battery you need to move up to the xlt trim a less expensive lfp battery made in partnership with catl will be offered next year in 2024 lfp stands for lithium iron phosphate it avoids using nickel and cobalt that are expensive and found in most EVs in America today. They have an NCM or NCA chemistry. I'll go deeper into this subject in the next video. Next up, Chevrolet Silverado EVWT. 
Chevrolet marketing seems to avoid saying that WT stands for work truck, but you know, I mean, what else could it stand for? Production of this pickup starts in the second half of this year. It's likely that they will prioritize building the more expensive personal use RST models over the less expensive WT. This truck is a pre-production model. All that shiny plastic on the inside will not be there when finished. Pre-production tooling does not have graining added to give a softer appearance until they have finished making any adjustments to the design. Chevrolet is sticking with a base price of $39,990 for the 1WT. Wow. Ford beat Chevy to production, but Chevy is hitting back hard on price. The original price of the Ford Lightning Pro was $41,000, but when they saw how much demand there was, they raised the price nearly fifteen dollars now, now, to be clear, Ford said it was because of inflation and demand for battery materials that they increased the price, and Chevrolet could announce any day that there are new prices for the WT. Both trucks are all-wheel drive. Chevrolet wins on standard horsepower. Ford wins on standard torque. The battery is twice as big as Ford's. Chevrolet did not say if they would offer a smaller battery in the future. The battery is the most expensive part of an EV, so... The fact that it is cheaper and offers twice the battery just doesn't seem to add up. Chevrolet claims to have a fast charge up to 350 kilowatts. That's twice the rate of the Ford. But in tests I've seen of the similar Hummer EV, it calls into question how long GM trucks can stay at that high rate of charge. It could be some software refinement that needs to happen with the battery management system. We'll see. Both offer vehicle to load, allowing you to recharge tools and stuff. Chevrolet offers standard accessory power that is a little more than the optional power on the Ford. At launch, Ford can carry more cargo because the Chevrolet is hauling around a larger, heavier battery. The Chevy can tow more than the Lightning Pro, but with the optional towing package on the XLT Lightning, it closes the gap. Chevrolet has announced a max towing package that will be offered later on the WT, allowing it to haul 20,000 pounds. That should make for some wild towing tests to see how fast it drains the battery. Both trucks have, air quotes, smaller displays than the higher trim level trucks. They're still way larger than anything found in Ford or Chevy's just a few years ago. As you can see, both are crew cabs with five and a half foot beds. Unlike the RST trim, the WT trim does not offer the folding mid-gate. What's Ram up to? They had a press conference. They showed the Ram 1500 Revolution concept. I was hoping they would bring the Ram 1500 Rev production truck there now that they've released photos and featured it in their Super Bowl commercial. I did a deep dive video of the photos and what they tell us about the production truck. The body of the production 1500 Rev will not be like the concept truck, but the frame they've been showing could be very much like Stella Frame. That's their name for the body on frame electric chassis they are developing for pickup trucks and other large vehicles like full size SUVs and delivery vans. Cowtex is a company that packages battery cells into an enclosure for placement in an EV. Ram Rev will not launch with solid state batteries as they show here. That's next generation technology. Aside from that, this could be the underpinnings for the production truck. Other than that, not much to compare to the Silverado or Lightning. Rivian was not there. They don't offer a work truck version of the R1T. Rivian is too bougie for that. Lordstown was there. Good to see them. They produce a few hundred endurance pickups. As far as I can tell, all of them are white. Unfortunately, they issued a recall for just a few trucks, but that has paused production. The base price of the truck is about $10,000 more than the Ford. Once again, it's a four-door crew with a five and a half foot bed. Lordstown is targeting fleet and commercial buyers, so this is an important show for them. Lordstown uses four hub motors, one in each wheel. That's a very unique design that eliminates axle shafts, which can be a source of efficiency loss, but Ford still beats it on range despite having a slightly smaller battery. Ford also charges a little faster than Lordstown according to specs. Peak horsepower of the Endurance is said to be a little better than the Lightning Pro, 
Because they are hub motors, torque is measured at the wheel. Like Chevy, Lordstown can't haul as much as the Ford Lightning Pro, but it can tow more unless that Lightning gets upgraded to the XLT model, then the difference is small. Last but not least, we have Zev X. They do conversions plus. Plus means that they work out any potential issues and have a digital cluster integration, so it's, it's good. At the show, they were giving rides in an F-250 pickup, so beefier than the F-150 Lightning. They also convert other Class 2, 3, and 4 trucks upon request. I'll end this video on a low note. Not only did I not wait in line to drive the F-250 conversion, but I forgot to stop by their booth. My bad. Um, they're based in Gilbert, Arizona. You can check out their website. If they have a show next year, I'll go cover them in more detail. But there are other companies doing similar things for small production volumes. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I'll have the other videos in this four-part series out shortly. So hit the subscribe button and like this video to stay informed. In the meantime, keep on trucking.